got our pudding cups. <laughs> <laughs> I put them in the fridge and everything. Oh my goodness gracious. Mm-hmm. Uh, hey Alyssa. Hey Sam. Are you ready? I am ready. I'm in a good mood. Okay, well here we go. <laughs> this is the uh, season two ender, you guys. It's we over. It. It's over and we're not coming back. <laughs> Just kidding. So today, uh, we thought we would answer your guys' questions as we did for season one. Um, if you guys had any questions about like just expanding on topics we talked about, all kinds of stuff. So I have the questions here. I have some also. In my hands. Okay. How did you get yours to look like that? What do you mean? Pink? Well, that's cool too, but no, mine are like this. Oh, see all, bro. Nope. Yeah. Okay. Would you like to kick it off? Do you have a question there that you have like ready? Oh gosh, there's so many. Oh, I don't know. Um, Okay, so the first question is, why didn't you guys have any guest speakers on this season? Um, It's so funny (laughs) because everyone, not everyone, obviously, but tons and tons and tons of people were giving us feedback that they didn't like us having guests um, in season one. So for season two, well, first of all, we had to film season two, like the better portion of it, in advance so we were kind of filming like back to back to back um for the podcast because i was going on so many different trips where i was going to be gone for a really really long time um so that's one reason but also because yeah we had feedback of people saying that they didn't want guests yeah it's so crazy because i actually really like having the oh my this i'm too far away from this microphone (laughs) i actually really like having guests because we're not like experts on everything so it's nice to have somebody who can like responsibly talk about a topic um but yeah to speak to the first point it is hard and it takes time to source an expert so because we didn't have that time to you know like vet or even find somebody who's available and willing um like a an expert we just i mean it just didn't happen and then we we didn't really worry too much about it because we were getting so much feedback that um people just wanted us yeah. But we're, I mean, we're happy to bring on some more. <laughs> yeah. So for season three, we'll definitely try to get some more guests on and stuff like that. But um, yeah, <laughs> so we funny. were like, all right, I guess that's people don't like guests. And now everyone's like, what about guests? Yeah. <laughs> like, okay. Can't please them all. Someone asked, uh, what is a topic you'd like to talk about, but don't think anyone would be interested in? I don't know. I don't think that um, I'm worried that people wouldn't be interested I don't know because like for me if I was if I wanted to talk about a topic and you were okay with talking about the topic we I just feel like we would do it regardless of like yeah the views or whatever because I mean yeah I think I think really the only topics that we end up not touching on are things that we're either not ready to talk about or things that we just want to research a little bit more or find an expert have an expert on for and stuff like that but for the most part like we've pretty much just open head first <laughs> yeah do you have another one up there yeah somebody asked what our goals are for this podcast is there any certain number of subscribers that we want hmm. um i don't i wouldn't say that i have like a subscriber number or like a view number that we're kind of like working towards um i just don't think that that's that was like our mission when we started the podcast obviously yeah. sam is like pretty successful online already um and we just wanted to do something that meant something, I guess, if that makes yeah. sense. Like we wanted to open a conversation. Uh, my goal for the podcast, honestly, um, which is actually already happening, which is amazing, 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 amazing. which is amazing, um, is to create like a, I don't know, like a safe space, I guess, to talk about these issues that, um, or just topics uh, that don't normally get talked about. And I receive so many DMs and stuff like that. Um, and I get to talk to so many people who have, you know, similar like stories yeah and stuff like that and it's just really really fulfilling and so I feel like it's already fulfilled I mean if we could make some money (laughs) that'd be great (laughs) but I don't need like a fucking like mansion or anything (laughs) it's like a mid-sized rancher I mean I don't know (laughs) four to six bedrooms three to five bathrooms you know something (laughs) humble you know (laughs) yeah what about you um, yeah, I, th- I feel similarly. I think that like for me, it was just I I liked the idea of having this as an outlet to talk about things that I don't get the chance to talk about. I think I've mentioned that before, but um, that was literally my only yeah. <laughs> thing. <laughs> yeah. So anything else that happens as a result of that, great. Mm-hmm. And that's pretty much how I feel about it. Uh, somebody asked me if therapy was any part of my grieving process when my dad passed or did I go it alone? Um, I was not in therapy, but I did not go it alone because I was drinking alcohol. <laughs> I was in a relationship with alcohol. Um, I 
just I don't know so when my dad was like sick and passing and stuff like that I mean I've talked about it like crazy but um we were just very isolated from everybody else and there there was so much work to be done for him and stuff like that that I didn't really even think to like outsource it and then the cancer center offered therapy to me (laughs) because they were concerned for me and I basically was like you're fucking wasting my time Mm. (laughs) it just felt really disingenuous like I think that you have to be a in the right mind frame to accept help like that um and I think that b it has to just like I think there needs to be some tact if that person isn't in the right mind frame yeah because they literally like my dad was getting the only time that they asked me my dad was getting chemo for the first time and the only time and uh, I had walked downstairs, I think, to get like a glass of water or some food or something because chemo takes a long time. And um, one of the counselors like basically like pulled me into her office and was like, oh, we're here if you like need anything, like blah, blah, blah. I'm like, dude, not the time. Yeah. Like I'm fucking busy, man. I don't know. Maybe that's just me being like <laughs> a chip on my shoulder. But uh, no, I didn't. And uh, I think that I would have benefited from it. But I also don't think that I was ready. And I'm just really glad that you know, I was pushed in, <laughs> shoved into it at the time that I was because I don't actually know if I would have made the best of it anyway. I think I had a mm. big old chip on my shoulder, so I would have just been like sitting there with my <clears throat> arms crossed. <laughs> mm, that's fair. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. But yeah, I think that it's definitely beneficial and important. Yeah. I mean, obviously, as everybody knows. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, branching off that one, I've had a lot of freaking people in this little uh, questions thing ask this. Um, tips on finding a good therapist it's um it's really hard sometimes it's really hit and miss and sometimes you do have to go try out a couple unfortunately which is an expensive process and it just sucks because you're kind of like rehashing all of this stuff but um it it is so worth it to find the right one um I used when I was initially trying to find one I used um a website called psychology today uh not a sponsor um but I like that website because you can go like look for a therapist by like are they LGBTQ friendly um are they religious are they like what style of therapy do they do like you can look up and even um like what their uh specialties specialties are like if they are you know really well versed in like couples counseling trauma whatever Mm -hmm. um so I think that that's kind of nice because you can narrow down people based on what you're kind of looking for and what you think that you might need help with um so I, I would say that website is probably the easiest way. You can also always go into like your family doctor and ask for a reference, but it's yeah. kind of hit and miss as well. Yeah. I mean, I did, I looked a couple times before you suggested our therapist um, and that was what I did as well. I just looked for the like specialties on the bottom. If you kind of know a little bit what your, what your intention is going for, like forward with therapy like trauma or um yeah like couples issues or something like that then you can see what they specialize in yeah yeah somebody asked have you have either of you made an organic friend since becoming popular and then she actually dm'd me and um elaborated on it and basically she wanted to say like have you ever made like a friend outside of social media organically since becoming like popular Mm. um and then she also asked that's a really interesting question actually yeah (laughs) and then she also asked um if you've ever become like close with a fan me specifically us okay okay um I don't make a lot of friends man organically especially like I I do end up like communicating a lot with people in my industry just because obviously um but I'm it's just it's so hard when you work at home because you're not leaving Mm -hmm. (laughs) you're just you're working at home you're relaxing at home sleeping whatever kind of thing so it's like how are you going to meet people Mm -hmm. um and I remember one time I tried to um bumble which is like a dating app but you can um change it to be like bumble bff where you can like meet friends and stuff like that so I was like I'm gonna meet some friends and then I went on there and every single girl that messaged me was like I love your youtube and I was like oh like I just like it was like so sweet obviously but I I I worry about starting a friendship that way because I don't want to feel like I'm on this pedestal or, you know, like we're not like that you're looking at me in like a different light than you would any of your other friends because I don't want that, you know, like I I want you to know that like and feel like I'm a normal person and I have flaws and I'm probably going to bail on you now and again and Mm -hmm. like, you know, shit like that. Like I just, yeah. Yeah. You want to start at a friendship feeling equal and not that you feel like you're above them, but 
I mean, even when we first started hanging out, I told you this, like, again, this last year, like, I was, like, kind of nervous sometimes because I was like, I don't know how to talk to you anymore. I mean, not the case now. Uh, But, yeah, I mean, it's it's just interesting the way that, like, um, celebrity, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I did air quotes there for anybody just listening. (laughs) I'm not saying, like, celebrities. Um, Yeah. I, I mean, I am not that popular, but um, I find that I make organic friends just because I have like hobbies I guess not ho- well acting I guess is like more of like a well yeah passion, uh, but yeah um yeah I, I met one of my good friends now I met her in a scene study class and then kind of like I'm melding in with her group of friends and stuff and then I have friends uh like our friend Felix is from high school um but I guess that was before so yeah I think just like getting out there and doing like hobbies for me is what happens but nobody's like walking up onto the street and being like hey Lisa (laughs) so it's probably it's different (laughs) and I just isolate myself yeah um ooh, this is kind of an interesting question actually um someone said how do you guys feel after touching on deeper topics like somebody asked me that too oh really yes um oh sorry this is the one that I had okay okay how do you guys decompress after emotional episode do you ever need time apart oh my god is that Annie no (laughs) god (laughs) um how do I feel? I I don't know. I'm like pretty fucking like. Yeah. I'm like literally we shut off the camera and I go like this. And then I'm like, okay, do you want to go to the game? <laughs> <laughs> like it doesn't. Um, I don't know. It's almost I feel like for me like therapy. Like I can ball my eyes out in that room and then I leave and I'm like, all right, let's like. I, I don't know. Yeah. I guess maybe I compartmentalize or something like that. I'm like, okay, I'm leaving this here. You can have that. Yeah. I'm not going to take it with me, I guess. What about yeah. you? Uh, yeah. Oh, wait, sorry. Oh. Uh, I don't feel like we need time apart after. <laughs> Just l- let the record show. <laughs> yeah. I feel like we need more time. <laughs> um, sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm doing something weird with my freaking thing. Um, I feel similarly. Yeah, I don't. But, but I think also because um, you and I both, I think, talk so much so openly about stuff like this and like I I talk to a lot of people about like mental health and you know different stuff like that so um so I I think that I'm just so used to it that it doesn't phase me to like sit down and talk about deeper topics and stuff like that yeah the only time that I get um like anxiety or anything like that is if I'm touching on a topic that maybe I'm not ready to share yet Mm. Uh, when we were talking about well not not ready to share but like when we did the dealing with loss episode I was freaking like my chest was like red my neck was getting (laughs) red because that's what happens to me when I have anxiety Um, but after that episode I was okay but before that episode I was like fucking stressed nervous yeah. yeah yeah but yeah okay somebody asked are you happier with season two content and see improvement from season one hmm I don't know. Okay, this is... I think there's so many differences about season one and season two for us. First of all, because for season two, we switched to... Not switched fully, but we started filming for YouTube as well. Mm -hmm. So that was a huge change in um, just the the style of how we were recording the podcast. Like, I really had to get used to, like, having cameras on me. I I had a really hard time at the beginning of season two, like, focusing on the conversation Mm -hmm. because I was just conscious of the cameras and that made me, like, feel weird. Um... So, and I, and I think that that's just due to like, because I sit down and I film and like, I'm like a freaking one take wonder usually. <laughs> like I just sit down and I talk and it's like done kind of thing. Um, I don't sit there and like say lines over and over and over again in my videos. So I don't know. It was just weird. Like feeling like I was sitting down, like not prepared to actually right. be recorded. Do you know what I mean? Like I, I was like, oh, this is a topic where like, I don't know where it's going. So I think that that was something that I had to get used to, um, and the workload changed obviously as well. Mm-hmm. But in season one, it was sort of like we <laughs> had the opportunity to just like blow through all the topics we were like most excited about. Yeah. Um, and so I think that um, for season two, it was just like, okay, like now we have to come up with other things to talk about. Yeah, I found that, yeah, it was hard to come up with topics in season two um, that we felt like were worthy. But I think that we realized that we might be putting a little bit too much pressure on ourselves with that because yeah. I think that the response is still pretty like I mean it, I feel like it's all the same yeah yeah to, to our topics now as they were in season one uh even if they aren't as 
like right on the nose if that makes sense like they're not like we're such a specific topic right yeah but i didn't have a problem with the cameras like i i I just think i'm so used like maybe not used to it but just in acting it's like i'm like i will act in front of an entire audience not just these like three cameras and there's no fucking editing room (laughs) when you're up there yeah so uh yeah that was not an issue for me at all yeah um i was gonna say as well i think that um I, in, I liked some of the topics more in season one, but I think that the conversations, at least f- from my perspective, I feel like flowed better in season two because I think that we were less stressed about staying so like rigidly on topic mm-hmm. um, and just more used to the format, I guess. Yeah, finding our flow together. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, someone asked, could you talk about being a partner to someone who has an addiction and supporting them? Mm. Um, I don't know that I could do a whole podcast on this personally because I I don't know like I wasn't there for Matt's addiction you know what I mean so obviously I'm I'm here now and like I see how his addictive tendencies and like impulse control and stuff like that still affect him but it's um I don't know I don't know I just don't feel like I could expand on that yeah basically Mm, oh I think this is directed more at you Alyssa oh um could you please do a podcast on season three about survivor syndrome <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean I just learned about it <laughs> but um yeah I, I mean I think that that would have to be like coupled with another um, topic topic yeah but I I would be interested in that because I I mean even just re- rehashing that in the last episode which oh, by the way I've like I was stressed about <laughs> um yeah I didn't even realize that survivor syndrome was a thing and that's why I was feeling that way <laughs> yeah <laughs> But yeah, we could. That's what's hard, man. People don't realize what they're even going through. Yeah. I just thought I felt guilty. <clears throat> um, someone's asking for an update on your sobriety and navigating that. I'm so surprised that people are still interested because like, I feel like I'm a broken record. <laughs> but I think, I think the thing about... Well, first of all, I think that anybody else that's going through trying to get sober, it's a friggin' long road. Yeah. And... I think that there's feelings that don't leave you about that Mm -hmm. um, from what I gather. But, you know, I think it's just, I think it's interesting for people to understand what that process looks like for you. And you kind of have gone back and forth lately. Oh, yeah. Um, Well, (laughs) thanks for asking. (laughs) (laughs) Um, It's, yeah, so I feel like between months three and four, like I was totally fine. I was really happy. I wasn't really thinking about alcohol at all. Um, It was, I still, I mean, I still think about alcohol every single day just because it's such a big, what was such a big part of my life. Yeah. Um, And most recently, just I think because my routine got disrupted by going to Paris and then going to Seattle and then coming home and um, I kind of get, it's so hard to explain, but I get in this weird mood where it's almost like an alter ego. (laughs) Not like an alter ego, but I don't even know how to explain it. <laughs> it's um, it's a version of me. It's a part of me that exists, but it only exists some days where I just want to like fuck shit up, like, <laughs> <laughs> like really like clinical term. <laughs> yeah, but uh, and I've I've talked to my therapist about this a lot, and she's like, it's just part of you. Like, just you know, accept it and just fuck shit up. You yeah. know? <laughs> yeah. Well, but she's saying like, don't like shame yourself for being yeah, for that sure. kind of person, and it's um yeah so anyway I was kind of in this like thing of I just need a vice right now Mm -hmm. and I was like and I can't because I I can't do anything and when you get into that mindset of like I can't then you're like this is bad because I want to (laughs) exactly because now you're telling yourself you're like well why can't I do it like and you're the one who's you're the only one who's stopping you from doing yeah anything um so yeah, that was really hard. It was a really hard couple of days. Sam noticed it like crazy, I think. <laughs> She's like, you've been going through it a little bit. Huh? <laughs> but uh, I did persevere. I pulled through and uh, I didn't drink. And that's the thing too, is I wasn't even worried I was going to drink. I just like was like... I think I think that part of it, at least from the outside, this is like kind of my story, um, <laughs> is that it, it seemed like for the first little bit, like you were really, um, the, the pride was like pushing you through because you mm-hmm. were feeling really excited about that and really happy about that. And like you were accomplishing this thing. And then I think that when that, like maybe the novelty of that started to wear off a little bit, you were kind of like, oh, no. <laughs> and now I am left without wine as it turns out. <laughs> like, you know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, that is 
That is true. And the only thing, and this is uh, just very honest, but not necessarily the best. The only thing that kept me from drinking in those moments where like I just really wanted to like fuck shit up was um, that I was losing weight. Yeah. And I don't think that that's the healthiest reason. Um, But I struggled a lot the last two years, I would say, with not feeling confident or sexy or... um, yeah, I just wasn't feeling myself. And then since I quit drinking alcohol, number one, alcohol makes you gain weight. Um, and number two, like you usually eat like shit if you're drinking. Um, so since I quit, I kind of have started like taking care of my body a lot better and feeling sexier and stuff like that. And so in those moments, I was literally like, okay, well, I'm <laughs> so bad to say, but like, I'm kind of willing to give up the sobriety, but I'm not willing to give up how I feel about myself. Yeah. Which in turn is like not giving up sobriety. So. Well, and I, I don't think that's a bad thing. I, I know what you're like getting at, but yeah. like, I don't think it's a bad thing if that's what's like, you know, partially motivating you to kind of like push through because ultimately it's, it's lending to you having a healthier habit. Yeah. Well, you know? and, and that's the thing. And somebody asked me in one of my videos if, um, uh, I don't I think it wasn't even about alcohol but if it was like becoming more like popular on social media if that was lending to my disordered eating Mm. um and I said yeah for one week it was like I went back into that mindset where I was like okay well I can just like not eat until 12 okay I can just not eat until one and then I was like getting up earlier so then I was hungrier earlier and then I'm like okay I just have to make it till one and then I caught myself and I was like whoa 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 whoa, whoa. <laughs> it was a slippery slope it's reel it back <laughs> yeah so uh yeah I think that it's also like finding that balance to be like okay well it's yeah it's not an unhealthy thing with the weight thing but it's just like and our therapist said it so good to me so good so well to me um, she said it so good <laughs> she said so good um on Thursday she said um uh well I said I'm, I'm feeling like more confident and stuff but um you know, I was like feeling so good inside and now I'm finally feeling good on the outside. And she's like, isn't that interesting how that happens? How those two are correlated. (laughs) How dare you, Annie? Okay. Well, yeah, there you go. (laughs) Why would you say that? Yeah. Um, someone, uh, said, uh, could you do an episode about religion and the way it has shaped our society in season three? I mean, I'd be open to talking about religion for sure. (sighs) You wouldn't. No, I, mm, I don't know. I don't know. I would be, um, I just like, oh, I guess I can save this story for the podcast if we ever record that one. But I I just remember like growing up being so confused by religion because I I was not raised in a religious family. Mm -hmm. And then I had this conversation when I was like 19, I think, with this guy that was religious, but he explained religion in a way that I'd never heard anyone explain it before. And I was like, I get it. I get it now. Like, Mm -hmm. and it was, it was really eye-opening for me and I'm so grateful for that conversation still because I just feel like it was something that I don't know it just really shaped my opinion for the better about religion and stuff like that yeah I think uh that if we did do that topic I would want an expert and not an expert on any one religion like somebody who studies like like religious studies like yeah um that sort of thing and then also it would just obviously have to be the same thing that we always do which is like a very respectful and more so an educational thing um I just don't think that I would give like my opinion on certain things I wouldn't because I think it would be so easy to create like this back and forth type of thing and that's not what we want to do here so yeah I think it would just be like we would really have to um play like plan it out I guess yeah I I think that it would just be I think for that one, it would just be important to us to like tread lightly, basically. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, we kind of went through the same thing on the the uh, abortion, abortion one. one. Yeah. Because yeah. um, that's, I mean, that's the thing is like, we're not trying to like get anybody riled up. <laughs> no. <laughs> as much as some people do. Like, I think that it's just, that's, that's the whole point for us is that we want these topics that aren't talked about because people get riled up mm-hmm. to be like, let's, let's all simmer down. Just, yeah. Like, take it down a few notches. Let's yeah talk it out you know Ooh, someone said have you learned anything new about each other while working on the podcast oh for sure i'm <gasps> trying i can't well i just go know. on well that's the thing is like some i get that i wish that i could think of any right now but um sometimes when i'm sitting here and i'm listening to you um talk to me i'm like oh wow and it kind of like unlocks another tiny tiny little door into like <laughs> my view of you I tiny don't door like these tiny doors that we have in the background <laughs> no those are spooky doors these are nice doors (laughs) um just because I think like 
the questions that sometimes we come across or or whatever we're when we sit down and have these conversations they're very mindful and intentional Mm. and uh i mean we do have mindful and intentional conversations outside of the podcast but this is like we're doing nothing else yeah you know like so if we're having another conversation maybe sam would be driving or you know i'm like on my phone and we're just like chit-chatting or whatever you know what i mean there's other shit going on when we come in here it's it's just us just like we're really paying attention and i think that if you let it it can really tell you a lot about some somebody and not even um like what they say but kind of like like reading between the lines too i don't know yeah it's hard to explain i guess but yeah i agree with that i think that um i think that the other thing too is that like the more you talk about a specific topic the more that you come to understand what your actual thoughts on that are as well because Mm -hmm. you'll just be talking and like sometimes there'll be topics where like I'm talking about it and I'm like oh I'm having that realization about myself I'm unlocking the tiny doors <laughs> and like I feel like I am starting to be like oh yeah that's that is how I think about that or that is why that happens or whatever just different little stuff like that um in terms of learning more about you <laughs> I've known Alyssa for so long and we've been really close friends for a really long time um but I told her kind of recently that like I there came a point when after you moved in where I was like oh I uh don't know anything about you (laughs) as it turns out because like Alyssa is like open if you ask her a specific question so I I feel like there was like there's lot most things like I feel like you won't like you're not off limits from talking about it but I have to specifically be like hey about this thing (laughs) how was that for you? And then you'll be like, oh yeah, no problem. Like, and then you'll, it'll like kind of have like a conversation spur off of that. But um, yeah, I don't know. I, I think there was just so much life that you had between, I mean, obviously like between yeah. when we kind of left each other in high school to now. Mm-hmm. And it was just kind of starting to get to know all those like new parts of you. Yeah. Oh, very interesting. I think that that is very true. I, I am a very open person, but I'm not, um yeah like divulgent in that way I guess yeah like I won't just be like this happened to me (laughs) yeah (laughs) or whatever yeah wow I'm unlocking a tiny door now (laughs) (laughs) um somebody asked uh you said you lost your bffffff recently can you talk more about that that's a lot of uh a lot of forevers um (laughs) yeah so what what podcast was that in what episode was that in um Maybe the Friends one? Yeah, it must have been. I can't remember. Um, if anybody didn't see that one and are watching this one, I did have a really close friend of mine in Toronto um, who passed away pretty suddenly. And um, what did they ask me? Can I talk more about that? I guess so. <laughs> um, I do find it hard to talk about things like this because one of like my core values, I, f- I feel, is uh, pe- like people's right to privacy. And so I tend to tread very lightly on what I feel like is appropriate to talk about um, that involves other people. Like I'm totally fine divulging my shit, but it's not like really my place to talk about anybody else's. So what I can say is how it was for me. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So yeah, I mean, the day that I I got the call about that, it wasn't actually a call, but the day I found out about that, um, I immediately, my (laughs) chest and face went entirely um, splotchy and red. And I went to the bathroom and that's when I realized that. And then I thought that I was okay. I was at work and I thought that I was okay. And I went back to work and then I had to sit in the walk-in cooler and Mm -hmm. I was (sighs) bawling my eyes out in the walk-in cooler and um, my chest and face did not return to normal state. Um, And they sent me home, (laughs) which is fair. And then I went home and I drank six beers in the time that it took my partner at the time to uh, get home from work which was like a 25 minute drive, I think. Uh, And we went to the beach and I basically passed out on the beach because I was like (laughs) pretty drunk. And um, it took a really long time to heal from that, I think. I think I'm still healing from that because it was just so sudden, it wasn't expected. And um, I don't know, our relationship was like a little bit private as well because um, I don't know, It's I guess it's like hard to explain, but a lot, not very many people knew that we were like really, really close. And I've struggled with like the imposter syndrome of, not trying to make anything seem like it's like something it wasn't exactly and so I kept it very private as well and I think that not being able to talk about or not feeling like I was able to talk about it was really really kind of detrimental to my healing process um and then I kind of had to re-realize that I had that problem where I was like 
you know, feeling like an imposter and uh, kind of started talking about it more and like telling myself that it was okay to feel this way. Um, but yeah, I mean, I miss her all the time. It's getting easier now. Um, just, I think that like time goes by. Yeah. Um, but yeah, at the beginning I was like, you know, I, like I have a, a picture my eyes are running. I have, a, <laughs> I have a picture on my Instagram where I was like, oh, I can't say that because then they're going to go back and find out who it is. Um, <laughs> but I mean, there's very few people who I'm like, you are my person. And I used to tell her that like, she was my person and it's just like really hard to, I don't know, lose somebody like that, and it makes me sad. So take care of your friends. <laughs> First eye water of the episode. <laughs> yeah, you got one, you dirty dogs. <laughs> um, someone said, did Matt being so open about his past with addiction have any positive or negative implications? Um, no, not, not, none really, I would say. <laughs> I, th- I think the only thing was that um, there was one person looking directly. Um, There was one person that just had commented on the YouTube saying um, that they wish that you and I hadn't been like laughing during the episode because you could tell that Matt was trying to um, brush it off, but that it was bothering him and stuff like that and that we weren't taking his story seriously. And um, I mean, yeah, like it's it's just that's that's kind of the result of when you do take your actual relationship with someone kind of like more public Mm -hmm. because that is how we communicate with Matt and and that is how he communicates back and it's it it truly is a non-issue like not to speak on his behalf but we did actually talk about that that um comment comment um just because like I wanted to make sure that he didn't feel that way um but yeah no that's just one also it's just interesting for someone to think that that's the first time that we've had that conversation with Matt. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And not even just me, like you're his wife. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, that's the thing is if, if somebody is so comfortable in themselves enough to come onto a public platform and talk about their addiction, um, I mean, he obviously knows what our podcast is like and stuff like that. And I think that it is, it could be really hard. Mm, how, what am I, how, what am I, what am I trying to say? Um, Part of like what makes things approachable, I feel, is that, I mean, even when I was just talking about one of my best friends at the beginning of it, I was laughing and it's because we want to make things more approachable and and whatever. And this is how we talk about things. And that is how I talk about people that I've lost because I, yeah. And it's the same thing with like addiction and stuff like that. I feel it's like we want to, we want to make it lighthearted enough that we're not scared to talk about it. Yeah. You know? And yeah, I mean, genuinely, that is how we communicate yeah. with each other. I think that that is like exactly it is that people kind of watch how we, how you and I communicate, how we communicate with Matt, how we communicate with guests, different stuff like that. And um, I don't know, I, it, people just like have obviously their opinions about it because they might have gone about it differently. But um, that was actually a, a uh, comment that was quite common on that uh, episode was that people were like feeling like we weren't taking addiction seriously enough and that we weren't, um, you know, like basically paying it the respect that it deserves and, mm. and stuff like that. And, um, and and I mean, the thing with that is that I just feel like you are entitled to feel that way. But at the same time, that is just kind of gatekeeping how mm. people can express themselves surrounding different topics. And ultimately, addiction is a serious thing. And mm-hmm. that's why it's so important, I think, to let people talk about it however they wish. Yeah. Well, and, <clears throat> and the other thing that I think I've said before is... Um, There are certain things that we don't talk about on the podcast because we're not ready to. Um, But you, you, at the end of the day, don't know everything that we've been through. Mm -hmm. And so um, I think that it's just important to remember that, like, we, you know, we think really hard about how we're going to approach these topics because they are sensitive. And, um, I mean, we never have malintent either. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, we we do. And um, I've said it before, like, I, I struggle with addiction in my family and, and stuff like that. And I would never, uh, we would never, <laughs> basically. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 I didn't know that that was a, a common theme on that episode. Yeah, that there, was thought- a few, there, was a, there was a few people that felt kind of, like, weird about it. And there was another comment that someone was, like, um, basically, like, saying, like, well, it sounds like you were just, like, so privileged and, like, right. you, like... Like, they were basically making it seem like you don't actually understand addiction because you had, like, a family behind you and you had money and you had whatever kind of thing. But, like, again, like, it's just, like, that's not, you know... I mean, there's 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 t- 
tons of addicts that have no one around them and they have no resources and all that kind of stuff. There's tons of addicts that have perfectly normal families and friends and like a, just a otherwise like normal life. You know what I mean? But they are still, it just doesn't discriminate. Uh, someone said, hi, how are you two balancing work and friendship? I love you both and can't wait for season three. Oh, very sweet. How are we balancing work and friendship? Um... I just, I don't feel like it's an issue. Yeah. I don't know if you do. So I feel like it's hard to talk about because I don't feel like there's a problem. Um, (laughs) (laughs) um, I think the only thing is, uh, which I actually just did today. Sometimes I feel sensitive about like literally nothing. Not literally nothing. I shouldn't minimize it. But um, in those days, I just let Sam know that I'm feeling sensitive that day. Like I did today. Um, (laughs) And not that it's ever really been an issue, but... I think it's just important to be open and honest with people because how she might approach me on a like non-sensitive day would be different to how she's going to approach me on a sensitive day and just keeping that in mind because you know sometimes with things with work it has to be a lot more like blunt or fast-tracked or you know like we need to get it done um whereas in our friendship things are like I feel like things are um I don't know we spend so much time together that things can be like so much more like relaxed and stuff like that so just making sure that you're cognizant of the fact that like okay this is this is work and it's like nothing's personal in work it's just like this is the work that needs to be done type of thing I don't know how do you feel yeah I think that um it's it's not really like a balance that we have to like work really hard to achieve but but I think that that has a lot to do with the fact that like I mean, we're only doing this podcast once a week. Mm. You know what I mean? Like if we were doing this podcast and releasing content five days a week, Mm -hmm. I think it would be a very different situation. Mm -hmm. Um, But because this doesn't um, take up like a huge, huge, huge amount of time, except for editing now that we're on YouTube, um, (laughs) it doesn't take a huge amount of time. So I think that because of that, we're able to, you know, just kind of seamlessly transition in and out of work. One, again, going back to what we said in the friendship podcast, if you love somebody, you want to be fair to them yeah so if you know I'm feeling overwhelmed or whatever then Sam takes over something or vice versa and um we're just honest about it and then we care about each other so then we make it fair yeah there you (laughs) go yeah have a good base foundation before you start a business with somebody (laughs) there you go uh someone said what is the most valuable lesson you've learned in the last year um I don't know this one just came to me because it's like so fresh but I think that it is probably the most valuable lesson that I've learned um and it's so cliche, but that you won't love yourself until you love yourself. <laughs> that you won't love yourself until, <laughs> until you love yourself. yourself. Because, um, I mean, I just said it like 10 minutes ago, but um, in everything that I've tried to do over the last year, I struggled with anxiety and then, um, you know, feelings of shame and guilt and all that stuff. And then not liking my outside body. And I think that a lot of it stemmed from me trying to deal with who I was on the inside, like trying to find myself. I'm like, who am I even? Like, I don't mm. even know really. Like, I've just been dealing with crisis after crisis yeah and um now that I'm finally starting to understand like what my morals are like what my I mean I always had these but it's not like yeah. just but like understand what my morals are and my my core values and um really starting to be like you know what like I do I do deserve to be happy and I do like myself now yeah um I mean not in everything I do but like overarching I like myself and Um, that really does show up in every aspect of your life. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Um, I don't, I wouldn't say that I have like a, well, I'm, I do have lessons I've learned obviously this past year, but I think that like something that I've been like dealing with, I guess, and like trying to find a way around it, um, is like, I'm constantly going to therapy we have these conversations um you know like I like to talk to you about things I like to talk to Matt about things my mom and whatever like just about like what is going on in my life how I want to change things and like I try to be very self-aware and very conscious of like what what did I do and how did that affect people around me what did I say and how did that affect people around me how did it affect me all that kind of stuff but being so self-aware or trying to be so self-aware um I think has led me to feeling a lot of like just like I feel very like raw basically and like Mm. vulnerable because I'm like oh like I just feel like I'm constantly doing things wrong because like I'm trying to pay attention to how because I want to be better like I want to treat people better and I want to be more conscious and all that kind of stuff um and I think that that um 
has just been like a, a lesson I'm still on the path of mm. <laughs> is is learning how to navigate, you know, wanting to be better and, and better yourself and all that kind of stuff, but also dealing with those feelings of um, it's, it's sort of like guilt, I guess, and, and embarrassment a lot of the times mm. as well. Yeah. Yeah. That's something I'm on the road to pat the, to let you get it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, someone said, do you feel any pressure with a podcast because it's doing so well? Sense of responsibility, question mark. Oh, thank you for saying that it's doing well. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I do. I think, yeah, I think with feeling like the topics that we covered this season weren't like pinpointed enough, like I said, I was feeling some stress about that. I was like, are we just like putting out content that isn't, like true to what were the message we're trying to send yeah but as the dms started coming in and like the comments and stuff like that i realized that it doesn't have to be this like huge topic that's yeah. like so glaringly unapproachable it can like p- because we deal with so many smaller like mm, yeah, yeah nuanced things day to day and that still is uh, like affecting people and and Uh, helping people when we talk about it so I was feeling like a lot of responsibility for that but I feel like now I'm I'm becoming more like at peace with just yeah being okay with that yeah and I think that both of us like um like me having been in social media for so long and like you coming from like such a corporate ba- corporate background where like you had to be very professional and stuff like that mm-hmm. I think that both of us um through different means um we know what's appropriate what's not um what's like taking it maybe a little bit too far like we're just we can be pretty conscious of things like that and so I think that we try to bring that to the podcast and again we're not trying to rile anybody up we're not trying to be controversial just for the sake of it we want to talk about these topics in a way where it's in context we have the time and the ability to sit here and expand on our thoughts as much as we need to so that it's not just sort of like this one really quick answer to something Mm -hmm. you know so I think that all of those things kind of help with that feeling or like that burden of like responsibility of you know it's we are going about it I think I don't know mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> like we're trying to be as responsible as we can I think yeah and respectful yeah um someone said how do you guys find uh inspo and agree upon each episode's topic okay so a lot of our topics are born out of the YMCA hot tub <laughs> <laughs> um yeah, but honestly, a lot of them just relate back to our day-to-day life. Yeah. Would you agree? I would agree, yeah. Like, sometimes um, if I'm trying to come up with, like, a specific topic, if I, it'll be, like, something I saw on Twitter or whatever or something that we talked about mm-hmm. or a friend is going through or, you know, different shit like that. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I think that, like, it just kind of and, – and we want to pull from real life as well. Like – yeah, I don't know. I, th- I think that it's it's a pretty, like, natural process most of the times. But sometimes <laughs> when we're, like, really low on topic ideas, we just literally sit there and look at each other and we're like, um, uh, friendship. <laughs> like, and sometimes um, if we have, a, like, an idea but it's not fully formed yet, we'll kind of sit down and, like, expand upon it and be like, okay – what how how would we talk about this what things could we talk about how could we kind of direct this conversation just so that we have a little bit of an idea as to like how like does this idea have legs or not basically yeah um but sometimes we just fucking sit down and film it and hope that it turns out and usually it does yeah and i mean once or twice we've actually asked for uh help from our managers from matt yeah just like brain like people to brainstorm because um what do you call creative fatigue or Mm, yeah yeah, like it's a real thing yeah and when we were trying to really like pre-film when sam and matt were away it was just like i mean you just feel like blood dry yeah and so you kind of need to like outsource help (laughs) well and that's the thing is like you don't want to feel like you're forcing the topics either yeah that they're not gonna turn out yeah and like there's some topics that we have kind of like put on hold for later like we still haven't explored and there's other topics that like we put on hold for a little bit just so that we could kind of maybe become more like just have better ideas like the friendship thing we were originally going to do that in the first season and it just didn't turn out it was supposed to be season one episode two (laughs) did not happen (laughs) matt i was talking with matt the other day and um we were like going through like the different topics because he was asking me like how do we feel about season two and stuff 
Uh, and he was like, well, I've come up with like at least four, six topics. And I was like, what? <laughs> I'm like, no, you haven't. And he was like, yes, I have. And I'm like, and then we were like going back through and like going through each one. I'm like, you came up with like three, dude. Yeah. I mean, he has come up with a few, but <laughs> six might be a little bit. Like- he said, and then like anytime he's exaggerating, he's like, I said like six. <laughs> <laughs> It's a simile. <laughs> it's the same thing. He got into like this spat with our neighbors and he was like, there was like 20 guys out there. And I was like, Matt, there was four. And he was like, I said like 20. <laughs> I'm like, okay, that is such an extreme over exaggeration. Like, give me a break. Uh, well, you guys, those are the questions that you guys had about season two. It's, um, I don't know. It's been so fun doing this podcast and I'm just so grateful that we get to continue to do it every week and um, that you guys are so open and honest with us as well. It makes being, you know, out here being vulnerable a lot easier for me anyway. Um, It makes me feel validated. Yeah. because you guys are willing to be open and honest not that you have to um <laughs> <laughs> not that i'm pressuring anybody no <laughs> <laughs> but um i just think that it's been really really uh yeah helpful and cool to see this i don't know come to fruition and uh we're really excited to come back for season three yeah so thank you guys so much again for all of your support and listening every week we really really appreciate it and we're just really proud and happy of this little community we all have together um if you guys have anything that you would like to see any guests that you're looking forward to for season three definitely let us know you can email us that's always in the description box of any of our um audio podcasts uh as well as our youtube description box so thank you guys so much and that's it for season two we'll see you guys in december bye